Good evening, Riga. Good evening. This is Renaud Capuçon, and I'm in Lausanne right now in the Haute École de Musique. Thanks to them for organizing all the technique. And I'm very happy to, to listen to you. You are going, you are in Riga and you're going to, oh, in, are you in Riga? Yes. 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 And you're going to play Bach Sonata number no. three. Yes. That's it. Good. And I will start from Fuga. Very good. Thank you. Listening to you. Yeah. Thank you. 
Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, well, it's a huge piece. Um, you played quite well. My first remark would be, um, you tell me if you hear me correct. It's okay, you can hear everything? Yes. Good. My first concern is the quality of the sound on the E string, particularly, as soon as it's a bit higher. Uh, the G and, and E string uh, and um, D string are kind of okay in terms of um, texture of the sound. But your E string is almost every time a bit or too weak, then it's whistling, or too aggressive. So my suggestion would be that you reconsider the way you distribute the weight on the bow. From what I hear from here, a few kilometers from Riga away, but the quality of the sound is very good. Um, what I hear is, I guess you, you don't have enough sustain here. And you could just have the feeling, to, if I take the bow and I show you, I, I have the feeling you could just be a bit rounder here because clearly when you hit the E string and it's it's this this quality of sound, it's really often like um, you don't do a, you do a, you go too quick and then you, you don't even take the string, it, it goes away, then it whistles. Or you take it and it's a bit, a bit like this. I'm exaggerating, of course. Um, it's very strange, actually, to, to teach you from all this distance. The first time I do this, it's quite exciting. In the, in the same time, it's completely crazy. Um, can you try the beginning? And anyway, focusing on this, the second thing, which is very, very important, is how you will take the chords. All the chords are a little bit um, hard. And for, for what I, I experiment in my life, the chord, if you push here, if you, you press on the first finger, are going to be like this. If you put the weight exactly the other direction, then you release it and then, then you have more, you know, it's it's just freer. So try to, of course, catch the fourth string, which is always very difficult in this fuga, but always to keep this precision and this, um, texture of the sound. When I mean texture, I mean the, the, the middle of the sound. Then, of course, it has to grow and to just develop. Can we try the beginning? Uh, could, could we have... Can we have... Um... That we have the shape of it straight away. We see direction and with you when you begin we don't really know where we go we don't have a feeling of something stable this should be amazingly stable as a dance and then the, all the entrances are going to be clear If we take the beginning of the double strings, for my taste, the texture of the sound when you play single notes at the beginning are very good, it's very clear. When you play double strings, it's a little bit weak. So I would I would suggest you to give a bit more weight and be a bit more round around the, 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 the bow. Like if you, to give a bit, a bit more texture, it sounds a bit like this mm -hmm. and then we lose the control of the texture and then it might whistle and then intonation and then it's a it's a consequence of things you know a, a tiny little thing in violin playing can be a disaster if we don't be careful if you're not careful thank you yes okay it was good it was, it was very good for six bars. 
um, from the seventh bar, you began to to lose again the control of, of this texture. It's like if you if you're holding something and you should keep it. So keep this texture, this this uh, raw texture of the sound. Keep it. it. The texture has nothing to see with the dynamic. You can play with this texture, three p or fortissimo. It, it's just the, the material of the sound. It's like the material of of a coat or a pullover. Um, it's, 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 if you touch it, it's it's a uh, the matière, you know, the material. You can try again, beginning. Okay, thank you. Uh, about bar 11, so your down, down chord is okay, but the up one is then a bit tense. Can you try again bar 11? Can you, can you, can you release more the weight, just like, like this? Without, without pushing the sound, just releasing, just like if you want to brush something, you know, if you want to brush, and you do this, if you do this, you are not going to brush. You're going to, to give some, uh, uh, it's like you hit something, just brush. So fast, but still, yeah, but don't, no, I show you what I would like to have. Uh, what you are doing now, you are doing, wait, I have to listen to myself, right? Because if I can't hear and I show you the wrong example, it doesn't work. You do, uh, which is a bit hard, I would like, uh, this is what I call brushing. It's like if you have some snow and you want to push the snow, you know, uh, at least I, I know there, are, there is some snow in Riga and I, I can tell you in Switzerland, there, there is some snow also, not now, but there will be. So, um, and never uh, use, never get used to this, to this, always, always brushing. For my taste, it's a bit scratchy. Can you try again? Um, don't don't push on the on the first finger. It's really, don't push. Just think more about these two fingers in the middle, and then release the weight in this direction instead of this one. And then speed and brushing. Mm. Okay, check first. First, just for our um, ear, check the intonation so that we can play into it. What's for me is wrong is already on the first note you do, you do this. Can you play on these two notes? No, I hear, I'm hearing, wait, I'm hearing, and I would like. Don't, don't push with the first finger, don't push, just. Can you try one thing? Can you play? Putting the weight really this way. It's, it's, it will it sounds strange to see, but try it. Okay, with with more weight. Okay, now you 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 just um, mix it. I mean, they put it in the middle, not so extreme. Okay, and now now you put. Uh, Are you happy with this sound? Yes. Okay, so this is a problem. You shouldn't be. Ah. Yeah. Um, so we have to de deconstruct now. This is a, so the fact that you're happy with this sound means that your brain has validated the fact that this is good, but this is not good. I mean, it's not bad or good. It's just, it's not a beautiful sound. So what you have to do is to put in your, in your brain, or if you, Sorry. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Fine, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, it's your brain who was not happy, it made the <laughs> thing go down. Um, what, I'm, what I mean with 
educating your brain means that when you play with this sound, you should have a warning sign. You should have a, a, re, a red light, which tells your brain it doesn't work. So your ear should hear this and say, it's not good. If your ear accepts it, it means you have learned the wrong way. So you have to, what I mean with de deconstructing is like now, as you are used to play and being happy, you have to consider and tell your brain that this is wrong. This sound, this. You see, in fact, it's just, we play a violin, it's wood, okay? If you press the wood, it's like if you do this to a singer and you tell the singer, sing. It's impossible. You hear my voice? So it's exactly the same with the wood of the violin. If you press too much, the wood of the violin or a cello or a viola or a double bass is going to be like this. And then the more you press, the less it sounds. So you can shout, ah, it doesn't work. If you just release it and if you just let the wood be free, it has no limit. It means that I show you just a very simple example. If you have a... If I, I take the, the structure of the sound, the texture. Okay. Now I develop it. You hear it's opening. If I do the opposite, if I take the texture, the structure at the beginning, and then I press, what's happening? It's exactly what I said with the singer before. You can press and press and press. It will never be louder. So this is the base of how creating a sound. Of course, it's much more complicated than this. I can't explain in two minutes. But basically, it's you know taking the string, moving, moving it. You hear the texture. I don't know with the di distance how it how it sounds, but. Uh, can you try play one G, three uh, third finger, whatever, whichever note you want? Okay, so take let's take from the really beginning. You try to make your string move like this. You see, I don't know if you can see with it, but it's moving laterally like that. Just with a little bit of pressure. Not when I mean pressure, I don't mean pushing. Just the weight of the of the arm. So it's just moving a little bit. Then it's it what makes the, the texture of the of the note, and then you keep it, but you let it resonate. It's like doing a circle like this, and then it's no end in what you can develop. And that's what I mean with having the structure and the texture of, of the note, and then you can go very very much down, keeping it, and very much up. Can you try? You, you go too, you go too fast. You you go you you are just jumping uh, steps. You should just really. You, sh you should feel it. You should feel this on your fingers on the right arm. You should feel every. You know it 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 should be absolutely on alert. Every finger here, if you if you press too much or if you if you're holding the bow too much, it's you're going to kill the sound. You know, my teacher when I was very young, she used to tell me, um, in order to explain to me how to hold the bow and not to be too too uh, too strong or too too light, she said you have the feeling to have a little um, this little bird. If you are pressing too much, you kill the bird. But if you are releasing too much, it just disappears. It's going to fly. So it means you have to be firm enough. And it's exactly the feeling you should have when you, when you are playing. You should be firm enough on the bow to be holding it, that it doesn't fall down, of course. But if you press too much, then you are killing the sound. So you you had you had the texture for like two seconds, and then you you played longer bow and you lost the texture. So you did exactly this. This is 
watery. This, this won't go anywhere because this is only, it's like wind. When I mean the texture can be no end, it means if you do this, and you keep this, then you can play. It's very soft. And it's like a huge range of variety of colors and of uh, difference of texture. Okay, then we do something else. Let, let's do it again. Can you try again? Now, I think if you press a bit too much, you press a bit too much now. I mean, if I would be if I would be with you, I could help you also with, with your posture. It has to be, you have to be really, you know, when you play the violin, we have to be like a tree, really down, down to earth. And the two, um, two feet have to be really in, in the floor. Then the tree can develop. And if it's really enraciné, you know, in, in the floor. But anyway, let's, but please keep it in your mind because it's very, very important. Uh, the fact that we went to this because I asked you, do you like this sound? And you said, yes. If you'd have said no, it would have been easier. But you said yes, meaning that you are used to this sound. And I encourage you to, to really try to modulate it because um, if not, you will have always these problems of aggressivity in the sound and you will want to play louder, but you will push and in pushing, it will sound less. Okay, so let, let's just begin again from... Uh, Let's do from the beginning. I don't like with your way of having the sound is it's uh, it's like you it goes too fast you don't have the time to really get the string it's like you you are just touching like this so sometimes it works but most of the time it just makes a sound which is a little bit like if you would have a voice a little bit like this so we can hear you know what I mean it's not full body sound so this you have to work um, let's just take um, a part which is a bit different to work on something else. Can we play the, the, the part um, like bar 60 or 62? Bar 62. Okay, so can you try? There is another thing you should check is you play a lot like this. You don't open enough this. And it makes this sound a bit v -v 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 like this. Try to really, when you play détaché like this, to, uh, to do this a little bit more. You're doing it. And try again. Again. Look, look. I show you. I show you what you do. Sorry, I'm 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 a bit monomaniac with this sound, but you do. And I would like. Um, can, you, can you just play, really re releasing this finger, not not having any tension? No, but don't. It's it's an image. Don't play like this. It was just not oh. to press on it. these parts to take the, the chord. Okay. okay, and now don't do you see this 
bass and the This is another thing I didn't tell you. You should. Sorry, another thing you should really do is breathing more. Um, a lot of time you are just not anticipating enough the chords and the phrasing, and then you are instead of taking time, you're a bit like somebody who would want to speak a little bit too much, and then it will move up. So it's it comes. It's like it's not really sort in advance and organize that it flows. So there are a lot of places it's not in tune or it's not um, precise, not because you don't play in tune, but because you go too fast and then it makes your ear as not the time to transmit it to the brain and to give it to the fingers. So it's like, it's all machinery here. You know, what we do here and here, violin is not an easy stuff. And I'm sure you know it and we all know, um, but all, I really often say to my students that it's like the brain, our brain, the violinist brain, it's like, a, for example, a, a factory or an airport with thousands of people working constantly, day and night. And really often we are practicing with four or five people in the old airport. We don't use everybody and we should use every, absolutely everybody all the time, meaning there are so many things complicated and which are, have to be with transmission and organization of all these little parameters that when we work at home we have to get 160 percent or 200 percent of focusing and attention and concentration on every problem and everything and most of the time what do we do we practice we just repeat we play we play so okay sometimes we play slowly because the teachers ask us to play slowly and, but we play slowly, stupidly, with three guys working in the old airport. And there are thousands and thousands who are ready to work, but we don't ask them to work. Of course, it's a stupid image, but just to, to, to give you an idea. So in this, in this piece of Bach, which is one of the most demanding and which asks a lot of skills, of course, structure, intonation, breathing, phrasing, uh, connaissance of of, of all the structure of, of par, but most of the time you should just be ready to have all these things because you can't just play fast and suddenly having a chord like this, then it's too late and it doesn't work. So this was also another part I wanted to say. Sorry, I say a lot of things because we only have 40 minutes and I perhaps I won't see you for a long time. So I just want to give you the most and you do with what I say, you do then whatever you want, but at least it's said. <laughs> Can we do again this place? Of course, um, yeah, pa 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 pa, yeah, pa 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 pa, wham pam. Don't don't yeah pa 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 pa, pam pam. Don't don't rush because if you rush arriving in bar sixty six, the whole structure is gone, and then your chord is going to be hard, and it's not going to be in tune, and then it's a, it's going to be like something a consequence of consequence of not good things. Play the same, play. Play the same, opening more your... Okay, can you play? A bit more elegance. Okay, also I'm not... I'm not crazy about the way you are you are taking the sound. It's a little bit da, 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 ba, ba, a bit like this, you know, like a, somebody who plays a trumpet with a, a, a ugly sound. Um, I would like to hear a beautiful trumpet. So just give a tiny bit more weight of the arm on the bow to get a bit more structure in the, a bit more texture in the sound.
Okay. Um, we, we should put some glue or something. <laughs> um, I think I, I'm, I'm far away, and of course I can't really see everything, uh, how you, you use your body when you play, but what I hear, I'm quite sure that here it's blocked because even when you play yam pagadam pam pam, it sounds a bit like that. It's, it sounds a bit small in terms of you're not free. And um, I think this is the first thing that we should achieve playing the violin. The first step, of course, we can play whatever, but if we are not free, then we are forbidden. Uh, I mean, we. we we don't let us uh, be able to see all what we have. Sorry, my English is terrible right now. Um, what I mean is, if you're not free, you just you, there are a lot of things you won't be able to achieve just because it reduces considerably your, your way of playing. You know, if, if you play like this, like a bit tenser, it will be... Um, of course, it's exaggerating. You're not playing like this. But what I hear is that you are not free. So I advise you to, when you pr practice at home, try to constantly move the head, move the shoulder. You can walk when you play. You know, you just you walk around uh, just to to release the body. It's very important because, um, especially for people who are tense, um, it's very important to constantly thinking about it. And just, if you don't think, just to move, because sometimes we think about it, we have the feeling we are cool and we are not cool at all. We're just like, and sometimes it's very interesting because we see somebody playing, you speak to him, it's like this, then he takes the violin and straight away it's like that. And I really think what we spoke about, about the sound quality is mainly due at the fact that you are tense. If you, if you really put yourself down to earth, and you try to breathe and you, you move your shoulders and you, you think about it and you're conscious that the sound has to be better, I'm quite sure you can be better and you can improve these things. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, I can't really say more because it's, we, we could analyze every bar, but we don't have the time. But I wanted to focus on this sound um, situation because I really think this is the most important for you. So check it, be absolutely like a policeman Every time you hear a sound which is a bit ugly or a bit hard, don't think it's okay, it's fine. D, uh, tell, tell your brain and tell your ear, no, I don't want this, I want something else. And then you build it again. But I really think then you can, you can, do, uh, can do much better. Mm. Okay? Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks to you. And hi to Riga. <laughs>